Well, speaking of gloom, not so much doom, but um, <laughs> one of the new technologies that's coming up and kind of coming into use all over the world is solar panels at the moment but a lot of people aren't that interested in them uh, and there's an, a wonderful article up on fastcompany.com uh, trying to discussing the three main reasons people don't think solar panels are that useful namely one they don't live in a place where their roof or anywhere they could put solar panels di- uh, solar panels directly faces the sun like my house in Wellington oh. <laughs> <laughs> two uh, they live in a predominantly overcast area like Wellington and three the cold <laughs> <laughs> and the article actually goes through and explains in the US why all of these three ideas, more often than not, are complete and utter hokum. So mm. technology is progressing in solar panels really, really quickly. So now there are solar panels that work almost as well on overcast days as they do on uh, perfectly clear days. So having overcast days is not a problem when you need solar panels. We've, we've got that technology now. The um, sun-facing roof, again, it's best to have a roof that directly faces the sun, but solar panels do do work at least reasonably well when they're not directly facing the sun either. They yeah. certainly are able to generate a significant amount of electricity. Um, you shouldn't point them away from the sun, though, because that's just stupid. But um, <laughs> they don't have to be perfectly aligned to be very, very good and very, very efficient. And finally is the factor of them being cold now solar panels do not take heat from the sun or modern silicon based solar panels don't take heat from the sun and convert it into into electricity they take light so them being cold has no impact on their functionality at all in fact in some cases it makes them better at converting light into electricity so Mm. three ideas three really important points to say um, go and put solar panels on your house even if you don't think your house is suitable it probably is absolutely and photovoltaics are are just amazing they're getting so clever and the prices are coming down um, driven by uh, interestingly enough, economies like Germany, and Germany's not thought of as hot and sunshiny, um, but they've been doing some brilliant work there over the last couple of years trying to persuade the public and subsidizing heavily the public, putting in photovoltaic um, cells on their roofs, um, building large uh, solar farms, um, and pumping all of this energy back into the grid. It's a fantastic idea. Uh, go out and look at it. They're getting cheaper, um, they're pretty, they're awesome, and yeah, why not, right? It's definitely got to be better than coal. <laughs> well, one thinks so. Um, another one, this comes from Stuff. Uh, NASA has unveiled the plans for its most powerful rocket yet. Um, the idea is that it will carry astronauts uh, to the moon, Mars, if we ever actually get there, um, and also any other destinations beyond the uh, International Space Station that people feel like funding. Um, so apparently the rocket project is going to cost about $12 billion until 2017, when the first test uh, flight of the what they're calling the Space Launch System, it's a very exciting name, is scheduled to take place from the uh, Kennedy Space Center. I mean, that, that would be something fantastic to see. And then there's a whole bunch more billions of dollars going into building the deep space crew capsule, um, refurbishing the Florida spaceport to actually accommodate this new rocket, um, all of that kind of stuff. So it's going to be using uh, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen uh, engines and fuel tanks, because that kind of seems to make sense at the moment. Um, and initially, we'll also be using an upgraded solid fuel shuttle booster rocket. Uh, so <laughs> it's very going cool. to be very, very, very powerful. Um, uh, to give you some numbers here, because we like numbers. So the space shuttle, for example, could carry about 22,500 kilograms into an orbit about 480 kilometers from Earth, right? This new uh, booster rocket thing could lift apparently as much as 63,000 kilograms of cargo. And future ver- versions would have almost twice the lift capacity of, of that to um, to send missions into deep space. So it's quite exciting. Um, Obama, uh, the president of the United States, has apparently called for a human expedition to an asteroid by 2025 and a journey to Mars by the 2030s. Now, of course, much as as I'm thrilled by such things and would be the first person to uh, volunteer, I always remain a little bit skeptical about these long-term promises um, on the space programs. They are seeing such funding cuts and... um, are not are clearly not seen as any kind of priority by any of the administrations out there, but nonetheless we live in hope. And of course we're watching the um, Chinese, for example, space program with quite a lot of interest. Anyway, I'll get off the subject of that right now and hand back to Alf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's well worth waxing lyrical about. It's very very cool, and I share your skepticism and hope as mm. well. But rockets. Mine is another military article um, um, from New Scientist. Um, so. 
one of the problems, I, I guess, there's heaps and heaps of cool military technology coming out. Most of it goes completely over my head, but this is just weird. <laughs> They've fitted infrared panels on the side of tanks, and they're not um, infrared, so they're not a cloaking device. They're um, they're an illusion device, if you like. Huh. So when you look at a tank through a, an infrared camera, you see this shape of a tank because of the heat of the tank or the coolness of the tank. Right. But they put thermal panels on the outside of the tank, and now it's able to cloak itself in the infrared. Huh. But not just to make itself disappear. It can cloak itself as something else. It can make a tank look like a car, exactly like a wow. car. It can make it look like a pile of rocks. It can make it look like an open field or a tree, only to things in the infrared. If you actually look with your eyes, you'd see a tank. But <laughs> the fact that this works is really really cool that's and incredible they're thinking they could actually use it to communicate um, because you could observe patterns on the side of the tank the huh. same as you can get those little codes that you scan with your iPhone or anything at the moment like QR and, codes yes that's it um, and they could display them on the side of the tank and be Ooh. read so this is very very cool I have to say the geek in me is just going QR codes on tanks so happy <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely fantastic you just know a wag is going to hack one of the QR codes and send people to I don't know something appropriately silly <laughs> I, I was just so. going to say you know how they hack the road signs just change it so that these infrared tanks say warning zombies instead of looking like a car <laughs> <laughs> exactly right fantastic what a wonderful idea all right, um, and I think with that, we're going to move on to just looking at a couple of the interesting articles on Cyblogs this week. Uh, there is one more thing from me. I do um, apologize. Got, that's all right. We got kind of confused up there, but I um, have to mention this because this has been all over the news this week. Glowing transgenic cats. We picked it up from you scientists, but it's been everywhere. Um, a whole bunch of kittens have been produced that are resistant to feline immunodeficiency virus. It's the cat version of HIV that leads to the cat version of AIDS. Mm. And and they've now actually <clears throat> successfully implanted genes from rhesus monkeys into these cats that makes them resistant to feline immunodeficiency virus. And it's the first time that's been successfully done. To check whether the uh, implant of the genes was successful, they also put, uh, put um, green fluorescent protein from a jellyfish uh, into the kittens as well, so the kittens glow green. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they're very, very cool looking, and they also have, they're a real step along the way to solving the AIDS problem and possibly coming up with a future treatment um, for a vaccine for HIV and thus AIDS for human beings. Wow. Uh, though that's a long way down the line this then has to be reproduced in monkeys and have to go through a whole bunch of trials but it's nice to see some progress in this field because sometimes there's not a lot yeah and absolutely i mean this is this this how science works is small incremental steps that build up to a solution there's there's never going to be one big like da, 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 da. with science we have solved this one time <laughs> you know but it's it's always fantastic to see to see these steps being made and, and these researchers who've been working on this for decades now are still powering along they haven't given up it's cool. Well done. And guys. they're making cats glow in the meantime. And they're making glow in the dark kitties. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> you just know there's going to be lol cats oh, all over the man. net by the end of the week. <laughs> I hope so. If not, I'm going to go home and make one right now. 